Welcome back to GB Guns Armory, the series where we're looking back at stuff previously reviewed. This is your chance to pipe in with your experiences, thoughts, reflections, etc. Because stuff's been out for a while. And it's my chance to give you a little more of the thoughts and feels side of things, since the regular reviews on the main channel are just about facts and performance. Today, taking a look at the Lone Wolf Arms Dusk 19. This is a fairly new release. Gen 3 Glock 19 based gun. And I say that because you can't really call it a clone. There's uh, the internals all fit and match, but pretty much every part in this gun has been gone over and improved. Heck, even the uh, slide release is that I think it was a factory option, but the improved. <laughs> Um, Glock slide release where they basically weld a little blob on the end of it, at least that's what it looks like on some of the earlier ones. So when this thing came out, uh, I was pretty excited about it because Lone Wolf Arms had a long, long, I think for like 20 years, been making aftermarket Glock parts and they'd made just about everything but not a complete gun. They had a short run of another model gun that was kind of all the stuff they already had put together to make a complete gun, which was like, yeah, might as well. Uh, however, it wasn't as different as this Dust 19. What makes the Dust 19 so different for me is the grip. And uh, as many of you know, one of my major complaints with Glock uh, is the ergonomics. And this grip is, I swear it's a reduced diameter. It is so much smaller. Uh, easy to get the hand around. Then we've got a nice, very deep undercut here, slight undercut shape here, and then you've got these uh, ridges for resting your thumb and index finger on it. So the gun just holds completely differently. The trigger on it, of course, is like most enhanced aftermarket Glock triggers. We have some spring-loaded take up to a wall, Creep, some brake, and a, a good, good reset. There's only so much you can do with a Glock trigger. Uh, they can be pretty good. The weight on this one, I found to be right around carry appropriate. Maybe a little bit on the lighter side. Not a full-on competition trigger, but certainly not doggishly heavy or unenjoyable. We also have optics ready, and you see you've got some nice tall night vision sights in here to help co-witness with your optic when it's mounted on there. So overall, a good gun, and I was excited about that just because it's an it's more option, more competition in the space. It is a little bit too small for my hands, but I have very large hands, so I don't ever criticize a gun for how my hand fits it. <laughs> I realize that we all have different hands, and so what doesn't work for me might work great for someone else. But overall, I found it fairly comfortable to shoot. You've got the Gen 3 Glock 19 compatibility for any changes you might want to make to it, and it's 100% American made. Now, I know that these um, accomplishment lists are becoming more common these days, but it's still a nice improvement and option to have out there. I was surprised, however, at the limited response, I guess you could say, or I don't want to say lack of response, but the limited response that the, the gun got on the main channel. It seemed like a lot of people just weren't interested or didn't care, and it's always a tough thing to gauge on YouTube because when a video doesn't necessarily get a lot of views, it's not always because people didn't want to see it. Sometimes it's just because YouTube didn't show people that video existed. And that's a frustrating thing as a creator because I've tried to make content that uh, appeals to you guys that I know you guys will like. But I can't ever predict what's going to be <laughs> a successful video or what won't be. Sometimes two uh, nearly identical videos will have greatly differing performance and it just comes down to... I mean. There's a lot of factors involved, but one of the big ones is whether or not YouTube shows it or not. So, as with all of these, I will uh, provide 
links to see the uh, original full review of it. But I thought the Dust 19 was pretty nice, and it's nice and slim. They got some nice angles here. It's just a sharp looking, good looking gun that feels pretty good in the hand, albeit on the smaller side. So if your hands are smaller than double XL gloves, it's probably a good fit for you. If you wear double XL gloves, there's some other options out there. Um, I thought this thing was pretty good. So I'm curious to hear from you guys, why, why wasn't there more of a splash from this? Is it simply that it didn't have a massive campaign and so since not every YouTuber out there was talking about it all at once, uh, it was easier to ignore or easier to not be aware of. I mean, there's so many factors that go into how people respond to a product, but with the popularity of the Glock 19 and Glock-based guns, with this being 100% American made, and coming from one of the companies that has been there for shooters for over 20 years, I was expecting a better response. Uh, I know Lone Wolf has not always had the greatest uh, reputation because they've had some bad batches of stuff, bad source materials, um, parts that ended up just being not quite as great as everyone expected. I can understand that. Um, but to have someone who's a company like them that has always tried to make things affordably enough, or at least reasonably enough, I mean, that's why when I was a Glock guy, I was buying Lone Wolf stuff. It's because I could afford it, and it was still, to me, an improvement over the factory Glock stuff. So um, I respect that energy and the, those efforts because... We don't all have a ton of money to spend on guns um, and things that make the hobby or the passion more affordable are cool in my book. This gun, not so cheap. However, it does cost a bit to uh, make all this stuff in the U.S. Anyways, that's the Dusk 19 for today's episode of GB Guns Armory. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.